I'm Carl Anthony, Managing Editor of AutoVision News, and welcome to AutoSense Insights. We're speaking today with a longtime member of the AutoSense family, Beert Decoy, the founder and CEO of Espras. And Beert, good to see you again. Hello, Carl. Good to see you again. Uh, good to see you uh, during these uh, very weird times we are living in. And uh, yeah, usually we do this uh, interview face by face. Uh, not possible this year. <laughs> I, I do remember last year when we met face to face in, in Brussels, you had two brand new products. Um, we actually, you actually had two cameras on display in September in Brussels when we met last year. And you had said that you were very, very busy with things. So can you give us an, an update? What is the latest with SPROS? Uh, that was uh, uh, really something that uh, uh, was a milestone for our company because uh, uh, we could really show the performance of our uh, CW tough uh, images. And as a result, uh, we won uh, very, uh, let's say, demanding, interesting, uh, uh, nice projects where the, uh, the performance of our uh, uh, CW tough chips are required because of sensitivity and because of uh, um, uh, ambient light uh, suppression. Uh, there are outdoor applications and uh, you really have to uh, have a stable operation on long range uh, and uh, full sunlight. And that's, that's challenging and that's exactly the domain where we are in. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, Beer, for our viewers who may not be familiar or who are meeting you for the first time, Give us an overview of Espros. Tell us about the company. Uh, Espros is uh, basically a semiconductor manufacturer, a little bit simplified. Uh, our focus is on uh, CMOS, CCD uh, imaging uh, uh, technology. And uh, uh, CMOS, CCD is uh, a, a technology that allows to to um, manipulation of analog signals in the charge domain. So manipulation means uh, accumulation of charge or subtraction of charge. So these basic mathematical functions or binning, then it's a multiplication of, of charge. And all these operations are uh, noise free. There is no uh, additional noise. So it's the best from a, from a noise standpoint, the best possible technology uh, you can have to uh, detect photons and uh, uh, produce uh, at, at the end digital uh, output. And uh, uh, we developed uh, this uh, uh, CMOS CCD technology based on uh, standard silicon CMOS uh, technology and um, uh, in, uh, that, that development started uh, 14 years ago. And uh, uh, since uh, we had then this uh, technology, technology established and, uh, uh, and uh, supplies or supply chain established, uh, we started to uh, develop and produce uh, immature chips. And CMOS, CCD combined technology is ideal for time of flight uh, applications. And Beard, oh. that is... That is a perfect segue to the next question because I, I see the banner behind you, time of flight done right. I always like it when we talk about this topic, but let's, let's, let's explain time of flight more. What is time of flight and, and why is it important? Well, um, we as humans, uh, we are able to uh, um, see our uh, environment, the scenery in uh, 3D. And we do that uh, with the stereo vision. We have two cameras, two eyes, and a powerful computer uh, which uh, uh, correlates these two images uh, to a 3D, uh, 3D image. Uh, that's uh, uh, a fantastic thing. Uh, works very well. But uh, the problem is that uh, if there is no structure in the scenery, uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, let's say, estimate the distance. We need structure in the scenery. So for example, if we look to a white wall, we don't see, we, we cannot 
uh, estimated distance. Like when, when you are skiing in, uh, uh, in uh, haze uh, uh, um, uh, illumination or fog, then you don't see the bumps on the on the slope, and uh, it's really hard to ski. And that's, uh, let's say, a, uh, a drawback uh, of uh, of our vision system. And TOF uh, does it a little bit different. It's just one camera, but an illumination which illuminates the scenery and measures uh, the time the photons uh, need to travel from the illumination to the scenery and back to the camera. Uh, and this time of uh, traveling is called time of flight TOF. Right. Okay, and that, that's what we basically doing. Uh, let me uh, add uh, one more sentence here. There are two uh, uh, technologies or two uh, concepts uh, you can do that basically. One is direct time of flight. We call that PTOF, pulsed TOF, where you emit uh, a very short pulse and then really measure the time the photons travel to the scenery and back. And uh, the other concept is CW TOF or indirect time of flight, uh, where uh, the illumination is modulated, continuous modulated typically, and then the measurement principle is to measure the phase shift of the, uh, the uh, received light. Right. And we do both. Of course. Now, Beer, with regard to the time of flight camera, on your website, and I want to encourage our AutoSense viewers to look at this, but on your website, you have something called the time of flight ecosystem, and it goes through the main parts of the time of flight ecosystem. We talked about illumination, but there's software, there's the power supply. Can you tell us a little bit, can you tell our viewers a little bit about this time of flight ecosystem? Yeah. Um, as I said, we are a semiconductor manufacturer and our, our main products are the imagers. Uh, this is, you can say it's the heart of a time of flight camera or a LiDAR sensor. It's a LiDAR scanning sensor, it's the same. And uh, uh, the, the heart is really uh, the imager because it has to uh, kind of kind of uh, fishing out from all the photons which arrive to the receiver, the right ones which contain the information uh, of the distance. Okay, that's that's one part, and that's uh, in the in the image chip. But there are many many other um, uh, domains which have to be mastered by the engineers which implement the image chips into a camera. Uh, for example. Uh, the lens in front of the imager. If the lens is not appropriate to the application, it does not work. The whole thing does not work. And the ecosystem actually shows which domains have to be uh, carefully uh, engineered that uh, at the end of the day, uh, a good time of flight camera uh, uh, comes to the market. And um, we as a um, uh, camera chip or imager, uh, manufacturer, uh, we support our customers in uh, this implementation, not just by implementing our camera chip, but also how to build the whole ecosystem around uh, uh, this uh, imager. So Beer, that reminds me, just as you were speaking before, you said a few key things, talking about engineering, talking about the ecosystem, and then talking about your customers. So Tell us a little bit about your customers. Who are they and how do your innovations at SPROS help your customers every day? Uh, looking first uh, to the markets, which are, which are, in which markets are our customers? And uh, it's uh, industrial, that's, uh, uh, let's say somehow relatively simple approach because uh, there are a lot of engineers which uh, already have developed the optical sensors for tens of years, de decades actually. Uh, but then uh, there are uh, new domains like uh, mobile robotics, uh, very, very interesting uh, market growing, fast growing market uh, where uh, these robots need to um, uh, find their path through uh, uh, a hospital or a, a university campus or a, a logistics center. 
And uh, to do so, uh, the 3D cameras are, uh, are a must to have. And uh, uh, another market is um, uh, automotive. I'm uh, by purpose separate that uh, these markets a little bit because the requirements of our customers are different from the market. So when I'm uh, when we deal with uh, 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 customers uh, or the engineers which do industrial products, which de de develop uh, industrial products, then they have quite the good knowledge about uh, how to implement optical or optoelectronic uh, sensors. <clears throat> they have quite a good knowledge. But what they don't have typically is the specific know-how regarding TOF. Yes. Uh, it needs some additional know-how. And uh, we are we see our, our job uh, uh, to support these customers uh, that they um, are fast in implementing uh, 3D time of flight technology into their uh, sensors. Okay, so that's uh, that's one one thing. Uh, with the mobile robotics, it's a little bit different. Uh, these customers typically they are not looking for a camera chip; they are looking for a complete solution. They would like to get a nice point cloud, uh, clean, no noise. Uh, all artifacts uh, eliminated, and then they can do the rest. They operate with the point cloud. So uh, that's uh, the second uh, uh, domain we are we are in. We we develop such camera modules which pro provide these uh, uh, these point clouds. We have seen them at the uh, AutoSense in Brussels. Uh, yes. yes, and then the automotive uh, customers. There are. Also different, they, are, they have a very, very, very good know-how about uh, what they're doing in the optoelectronic and in implementation of TOF and LiDAR. They are really the experts as, as we have recognized them. And it's uh, nice to, to work with these people because uh, uh, with, together with them, uh, you can go beyond uh, uh, the, the, the limitations. What we cannot do with, uh, uh, with let's say, an industrial customer is it's somehow uh, limited. Right. And speaking of your industrial customers, Pierre, and in just an industrial setting, uh, in the June newsletter that you sent out, there was a really interesting article about forklifts with the SPROS time of flight technology about these self-driving forklifts that had to navigate a factory or navigate a logistics center. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's uh, uh, really interesting. Um, uh, the um, autonomous uh, forklifts, okay, the forklifts, let, uh, let's start uh, here. The forklifts, uh, they uh, all have the, 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 the the problem for the drivers that the driver cannot see all all every into every corner, especially when it, uh, uh, his his lift is uh, very high up, he cannot see into the shelf. So a three D camera helps a lot uh, to explore the area there and to make sure that the, the goods get, go to the right uh, location without any damage, without any collision. Yes. Um, when it comes to uh, autonomous forklifts, then uh, the the difficulty difficulty or let's say the the, the, the degree of uh, requirement increases dramatically because typically in such an environment uh, it's always mixed. There are uh, some autonomous uh, um, robots or forklifts or um, uh, autonomous guided vehicles. And also people, so sure. uh, and uh, you have to make sure that uh, there is no collision <laughs> at one point of time with shelves or with other things. But even more, and that's the that's the point. Not with people, not with, uh, with the humans, which are uh, in the same operating or working in the same uh, area. Yes. And the key point here is uh, fail safe. Uh, the, these uh, 3D cameras, they have to be failed if they have to fulfill the machinery dire directive so that uh, uh, no accident uh, uh, happens uh, together with such a forklift. And that's uh, a an, an, uh, an next generation challenge 
uh, which is uh, which all of these camera manufacturers are uh, facing, and <clears throat> our the design of our images uh, is made in a way that uh, uh, such cameras can be uh, implemented uh, uh, seal two. Uh, to uh, uh, achieve the, the required uh, safety level. And uh, we uh, also support our customers uh, how to implement the camera that it uh, uh, achieves uh, seal to. We uh, actually already implemented uh, uh, cameras which have, have that uh, safety level. Of course. So, Beer, when I saw the, the newsletter in June and then just listening to you explain this again, one question our AutoSense viewers may have is, how can we take what we have in the factory with the forklifts and apply that to roads for either future ADAS systems or for fully autonomous driving platforms? How do you make the transition and the application from the factory to the everyday roads? Basically, on our side, there's not much uh, uh, additional work needed. Uh, it's more based on, let's say, uh, environment uh, protection. So, or, I mean, um, protection from the environment so that uh, uh, the sensor can operate uh, when there is, uh, for example, rain or so. Typically, you don't have uh, uh, these, these issues uh, in the uh, in, in a factory or when when uh, people are washing the car with uh, a high pressure uh, spray so uh, yeah. it's more more the, these aspects but uh, the, the safety aspects are exactly the same there's no difference right right uh, beard it's always a pleasure to to, to talk with you um, I want to encourage all of our viewers to visit your website to learn about the time of flight ecosystem to visit all of the resources here that you have with the AutoSense conference. Before we finish, Beer, is there anything you'd like to add or anything you'd like to summarize? Again, is, is there anything we may have missed? Um, let me just add, uh, um, stay healthy. Yes. <laughs> stay healthy uh, and uh, do not uh, overestimate uh, uh, the turmoil the media generates with the with the pandemic, <laughs> if I may, if I'm allowed to say that, because uh, I think uh, the economic damage would be unbelievable, and that would, uh, and it becomes unbelievable. Unfortunately, that's my my belief, and. Uh, 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 at the end of the day, people have to survive somehow. And uh, if uh, at the end of the day, uh, every second is jobless, it's not, not really a good development. Okay, that's, that's a, a po political statement uh, regarding technology, if you allow to, to add uh, something here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, uh, uh, okay, okay, I pursue this, uh, this technology for 35 years but i'm pretty sure that uh, we are now very very close uh, to uh, much more autonomous uh, um, whatever helpers uh, yes. which which help help uh, the, the humans uh, and uh, as what we see is that uh, this uh, pandemic uh, supports uh, that or let's say increases the speed of implementation it's really a uh, very high pressure Beer, it is always wonderful talking with you in Detroit and in Brussels in person and this time virtually. So I, I always enjoy our discussions and our, and our conversations. Uh, from all of us at AutoSense, we want to wish you and the SPROS team, we want to wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank you for taking time uh, to, to talk with us today. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. We're speaking today with Beer. Decoy, who is the founder and CEO of Espros. For more great content from AutoSense, visit our hub or our YouTube channel. Just search AutoSense.